All right. Uh, so we're here at the Southern Class Championship. I'm here with Jakester, yeah. and uh, we're going to show you guys a couple of games that we just played, um, starting with Jake. So, so. get an inside look exclusive into uh, some of the games going on at this tournament. Uh, round one, I did lose, uh, but, you know, Swiss Gambit. That's so, right. Um, round two, I needed to win this one to, like, maintain my motivation, and luckily, uh, I did end up winning, so I'm now riding the high from that for the next round. I'm on one and a half, and a few other people in our squad are, are doing pretty well in their games right now. They just haven't finished right. finished yet. So, let me show how this went. I went C4. I've been uh, prepping a little bit of English stuff. Not on my own, but uh, went knight F6. At, at the end of the day, you have to play the game, right? So, yeah. it's, it's your prep. I went D4 here. He went knight c6. I saw interesting ideas of maybe kicking this, but it, I don't think it pans out. I think I'd, uh, it makes more sense. To just that is it. an interesting option. Um, I guess if you play d5, you're worried that he'll play knight e5, and then... Yeah, and then I'll be forced to, if I want to kick him again, go to f4. And then the c-pawn's hanging. Yeah. But you know what? I think you can play e4 in that position, and then you're playing f4 in the next move. Oh, yeah, that's true. I think you, usually when you get like this four pawn advance, they want to fianchetto their kingside bishop. So if you can force them to put their knight on g6, they can't do that. So that might be that might be good. But maybe this is also like some kind of line. I don't know. It's don't interesting. Know. Worth looking into. Right. But I played a much more uh, <clears throat> than that. One of her spawns with e6. Um, I went bishop g5 here. Rationale being gonna play e3 then it wouldn't have anywhere to go this bishop ends up being a real scion <laughs> um, uh, bishop e7 was the response and then knight f3 e5 and here I made a I made a saucy move with queen b3 that is saucy yeah so he can't really move this bishop unless he does something else to defend that b-pawn. And also, I'm threatening takes... Uh, sorry, I would take the knight first, he would take back with the bishop, and then takes... And then he only has one defender, and there are three attackers. Mm -hmm. Or, sorry, the queen is also defending, but... In any case, I would win a pawn, that's the... Uh, <laughs> right, that's the moral of the story here. Yeah. This is a pretty thematic way of putting pressure when someone puts a knight on c6 in this pawn structure. <clears throat> You want rook b8. A mysterious rook move. Yes, but I, I understood what he was going for. A not very mysterious rook move. Yeah. <laughs> um, here I go e3. Um, the idea being, okay, if I go for all this stuff, I think when I count it out, I had an issue where I wanted my bishop to be able to go out there venture forth. Um, also, just getting to move this and then eventually castle is probably a good idea before I try anything. Yeah, why not finish development before doing anything uh, bold and brash? Yeah. Now, if you at home want to calculate this out and see what I... S I, I definitely saw some reason not to just go for the capture here. Uh, I just don't... Don't so you're saying it's a, it's a pause the video moment? Yeah, this is a pause the video moment. Find out why uh, C takes E5 doesn't quite work. Or is questionable at best, doesn't actually win a pawn, etc. Do you mean uh, before or after Bishop takes F6? Uh, after Bishop takes F6. So Bishop takes F6, Bishop takes, and then this, these shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what just happened? We went e3, knight a5. Bam. Yeah, that's a, that is a real bam moment. Uh, so what was the what was the reason that um, taking on on d5 is not so good? Um. I think if you just take straight up, you don't win any material. That could be part of it. But it does look kind of interesting. Yeah, I think it, I think it could be worth playing. Um, 
And this is with the knight still on c6. I think long term it doesn't. You, I saw some reason I couldn't keep the extra. <clears throat> I think what you might do here is um, mess up their castling rights, actually. So let's say, could you put the knight back on c6? Sure. Let's say you play. Um, pawn takes d5. Oh, actually. With the knight on c6, I, I see why. So you're not actually messing anything up. If you take, um, they can take with the knight, and then whatever piece you're taking, they can either take on g5 or d5. And if you add bishop takes e7 as an in-between move, then the knight can take instead of the queen, because the queen's busy guarding d5. So you, you don't win anything. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay, there we go. Alrighty, yeah, so go on. Yeah, knight a5. Knight right. a5 instead. Okay, you yeah, know, whatever. It's a move. Uh, it's a move. I go queen a4 check. Um, you didn't think that you want a piece here, did you? No, I didn't actually think I want a piece. I saw yeah. c6, which is probably the only move here. Yeah, it is the only move. I mean, they could also go back. They could go back knight c6. But this is the only move that's kind of like not admitting fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but they still might have an issue because when they put a pawn on c6, now this knight is sort of stranded on the edge. It's kind of interesting. It's just that they want to play knight takes c4. That that's the only yeah, issue. And at this point, I had ideas of b4, putting the knight in a bad spot. I mm -hmm. can't do it yet because he could just take here. Do you know how you could prepare it? Uh, I was looking for ways to prepare it. I think c takes is what I ended up going. Mm -hmm. with, but um, another move happened some point. I, I wasted a move here. Maybe this you could also play c5. c5? c5 would have been... And then if they play knight c4, you can um, take it and then try to win that pawn. Something like that. Yeah, and then they, they could just go rook a though. After I take them. Oh wait, no they can't. Huh, yeah, that's right. I, yeah. I, I, uh, I spent a move being uh, passive. A patient hunter, is how I'd prefer to say it. <laughs> Oh, you know what I saw actually? I saw if I take here, they could go something like this. Right, add it as an in between move. Yeah. And then I would have to go here. Probably, yeah. Here? Oh, yeah, that was never mind. And then right. um, they could just take back, and then my threat of winning that pawn is no longer there. Yeah, it's kind of a nothing burger. They probably should have thrown in b5 just to activate that rook. But e takes is also good. That's what they did, right? Um, queen a4, c6, bishop e2. And then they went bishop d7, which is... Uh, now, if you recall, earlier I had the queen eyeing this b-pawn, which is why they couldn't move this bishop. But they just moved. I don't think this is that consequential um all things considered there were ideas of oh if i take they could take there and then the bishop eyes the queen but then i have my own bishop and then this presents a new problem where i could take take <coughs> take this bishop and then the queen would have to take back and then i could take the knight which piece are you taking on d7 with because it looks like your queen was going to do two things D7? Yeah, you said you're going to take on D7 and then take on A5. But which piece is going to take that bishop on D7? Uh, t -t -t it would be my bishop. Oh, okay. Got yeah. it. In the event, C takes, and then C takes. Then my bishop would have the line of slate. Alright, got it. Then uh, my opponent would have a move here, though, so I don't know what they would do. It doesn't... They'd probably trade it off or something. Yeah. Play knight C6. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... In any case, bishop d7 happened. Uh, t t c takes d5. Mm -hmm. Here. I was worried about a b5, or I was worried about a bunch of stuff. If they just straight up take, it doesn't actually end up working out for them. Um, but I, I wanted a place for this bishop to go, and I thought they were going to take back with the c pawn. They did not do that, though. Uh, they went e takes instead. 
Now this is a, this is a not as good for me for sure because now this bishop is alive. Um, so I've I've definitely questions here to mm -hmm. answer. Um, yeah, e takes. Here I castle. I hear you should always castle. That's usually true. I'm not gonna say it's often often true, especially when you're just starting out in chess. Yeah, yeah. At, at our level, at my level, probably. Um, not it, it's level, some. It's sometimes good to delay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes even just move the king, but that's all stuff to learn. Actually, playing the English and the French in both uh, <clears throat> openings, I found that you know prioritizing developing and then castling isn't necessarily always the best option. Like, yeah. It's good, but... Um, sometimes you have to establish the pawn structure or right. something. You don't want to have a, too much less space. So I'm already at the... <clears throat> I'm too high level for that advice. Yeah. Actually, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, castles b6, which is a suspicious move. I guess he wants to bring the knight back to b7. He's yes, uncomfortable with it. probably the case. And he ends up doing that later. Spoiler alert. Oof. Um, I, A3 here, I've hmm. already castled, and I'm, I have B4 ideas, right. and I also don't want them to <coughs> have, like, bringing that bishop over here, thoughts, yeah. potentially. There we don't want them to have any thoughts, we want, want our opponent to play like they're brain dead. Exactly. Um, they go B5 here. Okay, B6, B5, why don't you just play B6? Yeah, that's strange. <laughs> um, like okay, dude. So I, I guess he's saying like a three is not a useful move, so I'm gonna also not play a useful move to to, to be nice <laughs> yeah, to you. He would have had to like uh, preemptively know that I was gonna play a three, which he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, here I go, queen c two. Now here I thought that um b four might have given me some issues. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if he retains. I think it would be okay. The advantage long term, but I mean that B file protecting this pawn and he has two defenders on it. And what if you just play a like uh, knight to D one or something like that? Like I mean, it's not the most attractive move in the world, you know. It's not sexy. I was, I but was looking at this um, in response right, so to B four. Let's, let's first of all, I'm not gonna resign and tip my king. In response to this, it is. Yeah, but here I think they'll get b3 in, and then that pawn is really annoying. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe you do have to take it. But it's not the end of the world, you know, just, like, don't lose the b-pawn. They have their own problems to deal with. Uh, thankfully he didn't go for that line, because then I would have had to really buckle down. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, we have castles, and that allows me to play b4. Nice. Um, so maybe he just felt happy to play knight c4 and take back to the pawn, even though it gives him doubled pawns. Because he gets to keep the bishop pair, something like that. But you said he played knight b7 in the game, not knight c4. Yeah, it's actually funny. So he grabs the knight, mm -hmm. and like rotates it a little, he's like, mm -hmm. alright, Grinding I gotta it. move it. I was like, I told him, if you want to move another piece, I really don't mind. Like, no, 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 let's play by the Good guy, Jake. Um, so, this looks spicier than this, in my opinion. Oh yeah, it's for sure spicier. You're creating an imbalance. You know, you, you sacrifice some pawn structure in exchange for the bishop pair as black when yeah. you do that. Or the knight just gets to hang out there for free, which is nice. I think the idea is maybe he eventually thought he could play c5. <laughs> fat chance of that. Like, yeah, fat chance. It's not happening. Um, you definitely have the advantage in that little structure area because you can... Uh, attack the C pawn frontally for the rest of the game with yeah. rooks and queens and stuff. Actually, this stayed like this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, not surprising, right? That's why I call it a pawn structure, not like a pawn moment in time. <laughs> yeah, um, a pawn tryst. So after knight b seven, we have knight e five for me. And what was my thought here? I had <clears throat> so way earlier on, back when. Uh, this queen was still defending this knight, and my queen was attacking it. I had thoughts of moving the knight up instead mm -hmm. of like bishop e2 castling, with the idea that if I capture, 
or sorry, I would take take this first, which I keep forgetting to mention. Take, I would capture, queen takes, and then uh, the knight's hanging. It never ended up working out though. However, having this knight here is pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. um, it is... Strong boy. Yeah, it's a strong boy, and uh, keep that in the back of your mind. So, knight e5, knight d6. And what I play here may shock you. Pause the video. <laughs> no, don't pause the video. I All don't right. know. Well, actually, this is worth investigating here. So, I played F F3, and I didn't want either of those knights to come over because I feel like it would have given me an issue. Right. Um, however, there's another saucy move, uh, which is Bishop D3. Keep an eye on that. Um, However, With a small threat. There, there's some sequencing uh, nuances going on here with that. I think I think F3 first is probably better. Um, I'm not positive. I think... I think you... could be on to something. Because if you play bishop d3 and they play knight e4, your bishop on g5 is hanging. So yeah, you'd want to deal with that before you play f3, probably. Um, but to but in order to deal with it, you'd have to um, take on e7, and then queen takes e7, and then they can move the knight back to f6. Not to say that this position is not good for white, but it at least isn't winning any material or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so after f3, plays knight f5. I don't know about this move. I'm gonna be honest with you. It does look kind of sus. Yeah, because now I can do this and it's like, oh. With tempo. <laughs> yeah. So he probably has to play something like g6 here. Uh, yes, g6 was the move I saw. I was like, okay, that keeps him in the game. Things are still going on. However, he plays a highly suspicious move instead in the form of a queen c8. Mm -hmm. And I think this won me the game. I Queen C8 won you the game. Yeah, it's actually not as big of a blunder as I thought it was, but I, I still don't think it's very good. So this is where you pause the video and calculate stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you want viewers at home, I... Okay, welcome back. So uh, <laughs> what I ended up Jake playing... Jake paused the video in real life. <laughs> what I ended up playing was... a. Uh, Knight takes d7. So, so what's going on here is uh, I have two two attackers on this. He has two defenders now that you move the queen to c8. But if I move this first, if he recaptures with the queen, now I can just take this for free, right? Yeah, that's true. So um, probably he would have to. Mm, yeah, he's just, just having trouble. It was on d7, and the knight was on uh, e5. Yes, yes. <clears throat> um, now, something happens eventually. This knight also defends his bishop, right? Mm -hmm. So, what ends up happening is this, and then I believe he took back with the knight. I think that makes some sense. Yeah. With the idea of bishop takes g5. What I really should have done here was take on this. Yeah. Um, and then after knight takes, I have... I, I went upon and uh, right. it's pretty good. Then you just run back with your bishop so it doesn't get trapped. And... Yeah. But I thought I could win a piece, however I didn't even put together when I was calculating this out that my bishop's hanging here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fine. I ended up taking anyway, because now this comes with the threat of winning the pawn if he does decide to take back, which he does. However, if I take the pawn, and he's eyeing this pawn, which is not defended by anything, Mm -hmm. um, so here's what ends up happening. Uh, knight takes e7, knight takes e7. Bishop takes f5. That's what we just did. Yeah, and bishop g5. Probably f4. Um, I go I go for this first, actually. Oh, it's check, so that's fine. You can do yeah. it. King h8. I think that's the only legal move. Uh, yeah. And then I do this. Mm -hmm. And now... He blunders extra hard. Um, it was g6. I guess... 
I don't know what the rationale for that is. I'm going to be honest with you. He just thinks pattern-wise, I guess, that the bishop is trapped and that he should trap it, even though his bishop's hanging. Yeah, I don't know. So, so if he just, like, did a different move... Like bishop uh, e7? And then if I take the bishop... Um, wait, bishop... e7? Yeah, bishop e7. Like he just not lose that piece. Save the bishop, right? Yeah. Then I can move my bishop back, sure. At least he only lost the pawn. But now... I can just take back... Mm -hmm. And then he takes, and now I I have even more pawns. Look at the, look at the material. I have two. Yeah, pawns you're doing well. Now. Um. Got the F and H pawns. Yeah, and he doesn't even have the exchange or anything like that. Pause. Can, can you take it for a sec? Yeah, sure. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So uh. It's... Housekeeping. <laughs> What happens here? Bishop takes h7 check, king h8, f4, g6, bishop takes g6, f takes g6, f takes g5. Mm -hmm. We're there? Yeah, that's where we're at. Okay. He goes queen d8, which, huh? I guess he figures, oh, at least I'm attacking this pawn, I can like win some material back. But then after this, now I'm up three pawns. And, uh, the guy's just hemorrhaging pawns. Yeah, what, what is going on, brother? Uh, so now at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take any opportunity I can possibly get to either, well, obviously checkmate him or trade down. He should play rook g8, best move. Rook g8? What? Yeah. And then queen h6 checkmate. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd yeah, be yeah. nice. <laughs> Queen e7 here. Mm hmm. Hitting e3. Yes. But, like, are we concerned? So, so <clears throat> instead of a common sense, like, oh, rook, a rook to e1, defending it, what I did was check, and then he has to move, and then I just moved the pawn up, and now the queen defends. That's good. Which. I, I think know. that's good. It was a little spicier, made him think a little more, right. I guess. I think it's good because you, you really want to use your rook on a1 for something more than defending the e3 pawn. Yeah, so, sure. tactically defending e3 well, allows you to do that. Well, because if I move it over and then he takes, I and then takes back, he could just take it. Yeah, you'd have to take with a king and then that would be kind of awkward. Yeah. Besides, this creates mate threats, so that's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, g6, he went rook, takes f1, check helping me trade down, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. Yeah. Obviously, I took back with the rook. I'm not a fool. Um, I pity the fool. Rook, h7, wait, what? Uh, he played rook f... Uh, he oh, he played rook f8 here. I remember because I saw something that happened shortly after this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here I go... I wrote down on my sheet, rook h7 check. That doesn't make any I, sense. I remember you got... Okay. Um, what did you remember? I remember that you got rook f7 at some point, or that you had the opportunity to play it. Yes, I think... Um, I think spicy things happen if I go here. Like, you trade pieces and then take on c6. Something, something like that. Yeah, I don't... It didn't pan out. I remembered him, it, like, maybe not having rook f8 in play, and then you had rook f7. Wait, let's look at this. This is the... Uh, okay, then what does he do? <clears throat> he takes back with the rook. This is check, and then he could take back with the queen. Then the queens are still on the board. I guess I didn't like that aspect. But you're taking on c6, so maybe it's, maybe it's okay, because you're taking on d5 next, and you still have places That's to hide. That's true, I get more material. Uh, maybe I should have done this instead then. It looks kind of interesting. Um, that pawn's on g6. Yes. Yeah. Um, instead though, this only legal move. Um, he did not make an illegal move. Too bad. I took back. Took back. I just took. He took. All right. So now we're in a. <laughs> uh, I'm up. Two pawns. End game. Mm-hmm. And there are knights on the board. It kind of looks like you're up three pawns so, because that c pawn can't do anything. Yeah, that's also true. I did, it didn't feel like he had an extra pawn here at mm -hmm. all, even though he did. You count it. But anyway, um, 
what I really want here is for the knights to just disappear. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well, what if I just tried to somehow trade the knights? Um, you know, that would be that would be nice. Yeah, I guess you could play e4, but then that runs into knight e6. That might be a little bit awkward. Nah, maybe not because you could take on d5. Knight takes d4. I think there are a lot of yeah, options. Looks and good. The game state is simple enough where you can calculate yeah out uh, a whole plan. And I think there are several winning plans for white here. Yeah, anyone who's watching this might want to just choose your own winning plan here. Yeah. Build your own burger situation. So choose a winning plan. Pause the video. And now, now that you've resumed the video, uh, here's maybe I had the same idea as you. I'm like king f2 here. I have two connected pass pawns on the edge of the board. Yeah, we should probably just play out the end here because you're yeah. in such a winning position. Yeah. So, just to show your choice of um, winning plan. I think they went here. I went here, which contradicts the plan I just selected, so I don't know why you did that really. But um, Maybe king f3 would have been okay. King f2, king g6, knight e2, king f5. That's, that's g5. You put oh. it on the wrong spot. Oh, yeah. I went king f3 here. Looks good. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> g6. I'm like, wait, is he letting me? <laughs> so I go, I do, do, I don't do this yet though. Uh, first I do something else. Throw a check maybe. Which is, uh, I go g3. Okay. Uh, with the idea of, I don't want him to get his knight on h5 or whatever. Or, or h4, h4 yeah, me. that makes sense. All these squares are now off limits for this. Uh, so king g5, okay, so I do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, after this, he goes king g, wait, king g5? Is that possible? He's already there. He's already Maybe there. king f6. But it was definitely a king move. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm out of order here somehow. So king f3, knight g6, g3, king g5. Would you H4. hold the score sheet a little bit back? Yeah, h4. No, I mean um, back away from the board so I can, ah, yeah, you're blocking a bit. It's OK. Um, OK, so you played h4. Yeah, I guess it was my turn. I, didn't <coughs> I don't know. I guess you forgot to write down one move. Yeah. But here we are. Um, king h5. That's illegal. Yeah, that is illegal. What? Maybe King H6. King H6 did not happen. I can tell you that. Did he trade knights and then this happened? Wait, knight G6, G3, King G5. Oh, I didn't move this over yet. I did this first. Oh, okay, so you played g3 and h4 instead of knight f4. Yeah, then he did this, then I moved here. Oh, and so he allowed now, you this, yeah, this your dream. The trade. Um, and from here it's like yeah, here it's a stampede now, of pawns. Yeah. yeah, so you ended up promoting to two queens, right? I did end up promoting two queens. I could have gotten away with just one, but I didn't want to take any risks of, oh, I didn't leave him a, a square. So I didn't want just... That would actually be easier to avoid with one queen. That's true. You have less to think about. Um, yeah, I was I was careful to avoid stalemate. Yeah, you had that a nice meeting really too at the end. Really, the only thing my opponent has going mm-hmm. is a uh, maybe he can get me on stalemate after this. This obviously I move here and then it's lights up. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, nice. And you might want to read an end game book by what's his name? The which one? One that's like how to beat your dad at chess. Oh, I can't remember that guy's name, but I, I know that book. Yeah. Well, he has an endgame book about this stuff. And yeah, it's a lot of endgame is, ideas. Is it Karsten Miller? I can't remember who who it is. I forget. All right. I don't know my literature. But yeah, how to beat your dad at chess, but endgame stuff. Yes. Alrighty. That is why that this is winning. Cool. Cool, cool, cool.